all of Sansa's resolve had withered in the face of her aunt's onslaught. Lysa Aaron was frightening her as much as Queen Cersei ever had. He's yours, my lady, she said, trying to sound meek and contrite. May I have your leave to go? You may not. Her aunt's breath smelled of wine. If you were anyone else, I would banish you, send you down to Lord Nestor at the gates of the moon or back to the fingers. How would you like to spend your life on that bleak shore surrounded by slatterns and sheep pellets? That was what my father meant for Pattaya. Everyone thought it was because of that stupid duel with Brandon Stark, but that wasn't so. Father said I ought to thank the gods that so great a lord as John Aaron was willing to take me soiled. But I knew it was only for the swords. I had to marry John, or my father would have turned me out, as he did his brother. But it was Pattaya I was meant for. I'm telling you all this so you will understand how much we love each other, how long we have suffered and dreamed of one another. We made a baby together, a precious little baby. Lysa put her hands flat against her belly, as if the child was still there. When they stole him from me, I made a promise to myself that I would never let it happen again. John wished to send my sweet Robert to Dragonstone, and that sot of a king would have given him to Cersei Lannister, but I never let them. No more than I let you steal my patire little finger. Do you hear me? Elaine, or Sansa, or whatever you call yourself. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yes, I swear I won't ever kiss him again, or, or, or entice him. Sansa thought that was what her aunt wanted to hear. So, you admit it now. It was you, just as I thought. You are as wanton as your mother. Lysa grabbed her by the wrist. Come with me now. There's something I want to show you. You're hurting me, Sansa squirmed. Please, Aunt Lysa, I haven't done anything, I swear it. Her aunt ignored her protests. Marillion! She shouted, I need you, Marillion, I need you. The singer had remained discreetly in the rear of the hall, but at Lady Aaron's shout he came at once. My lady, play us a song, play the false and the fair. Marillion's fingers brushed the strings. The Lord he came a-riding upon a rainy day. Hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey, nanny, nay. Lady Lysa pulled at Sansa's arm. It was either walk or be dragged. So she chose to walk, halfway down the hall and between a pair of pillars to a white weirwood door set in the marble wall. The door was firmly closed, with three heavy bronze bars to hold it in place. But Sansa could hear the wind outside worrying at its edges. When she saw the crescent moon carved in the wood, she planted her feet. The moon door! She tried to yank free. Why are you showing me the moon door? You squeaked like a mouse now, but you were bold enough in the garden, weren't you? You were bold enough in the snow. The lady sat to sewing upon a rainy day. Marillion sang, Hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey. Open the door, Lysa commanded. Open it, I say. You will do it, or I'll send for my guards. She shoved Sansa forward. Your mother was brave, at least. Lift off the bars. If I do as she says, she will let me go. Sansa grabbed one of the bronze bars, yanked it loose, and tossed it down. The second bar clattered to the marble, then the third. She had barely touched the latch when the heavy wooden door flew inward and slammed back against the wall with a bang. Snow had piled up around the frame and it all came blowing in at them, borne on a blast of cold air that left Sansa shivering. She tried to step backward, but her aunt was behind her. Lysa seized her by the wrist and put her other hand between her shoulder blades, propelling her forcefully toward the open door. Beyond was white sky, falling snow, and nothing else. "'Look down,' said Lady Lysa. "'Look down!' She tried to wrench free, but her aunt's fingers were digging into her arm like claws. Lysa gave her another shove, and Sansa shrieked. Her left foot broke through a crust of snow and knocked it loose. 
There was nothing in front of her but empty air and a wave castle 600 feet below, clinging to the side of the mountain. Don't! Sansa screamed. You're scaring me! Behind her, Marillion was still playing his wood harp and singing, Hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey. Do you still want my leave to go? Do you? No. Sansa planted her feet and tried to squirm backward, but her aunt did not budge. Not this way, please. She put her hand up, her fingers scrabbling at the door frame, but she could not get a grip, and her feet were sliding on the wet marble floor. Lady Lysa pressed her forward inexorably. Her aunt outweighed her by three stone. The lady lay a-kissing upon a mound of hay. Marillion was singing. Sansa twisted sideways, hysterical with fear, and one foot slipped out over the void. She screamed, Hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey, nanny, hey. The wind flapped her skirts up and bitted her bare legs with cold teeth. She could feel snowflakes melting on her cheeks. Sansa flailed, found Lysa's thick auburn braid, and clutched it tightly. My hair! Her aunt shrieked, Let go of my hair! She was shaking, sobbing. They teetered on the edge. Far off, she heard the guards pounding on the door with their spears, demanding to be let in. Marillion broke off his song. Lysa, what is the meaning of this? The shout cut through the sobs and heavy breathing. Footsteps echoed down the high hall. Get back from there, Lysa. What are you doing? The guards were still beating at the door. Littlefinger had come in the back way through the Lord's entrance behind the dais. As Lysa turned, her grip loosened enough for Sansa to rip free. She stumbled to her knees where Patar Baelish saw her. He stopped suddenly. Elaine, what is the trouble here? Her! Lady Lysa grabbed a handful of Sansa's hair. She's the trouble! She kissed you! Tell her! Sansa begged. Tell her we were just building a castle. Be quiet! Her aunt screamed. I never gave you leave to speak. No one cares about your castle. She's a child, Lysa. Cat's daughter. What did you think you were doing? I was going to marry her to Robert. She has no gratitude, no, no decency. You are not hers to kiss, not hers. I was teaching her a lesson, that was all. I see. He stroked his chin. I think she understands now. Isn't that so, Elaine? Yes, Substancer, I understand. I don't want her here. Her aunt's eyes were shiny with tears. Why did you bring her to the Vale, Patar? This isn't her place. She doesn't belong here. We'll send her away, then. Back to King's Landing, if you like. He took a step toward them. Let her up now. Let her away from the door. No! Lysa gave Sansa's head another wrench. Snow aided around them, making their skirts snap noisily. You can't want her. You can't. She's a stupid, empty-headed little girl. She doesn't love you the way I have. I've always loved you. I proved it, haven't I? Tears ran down her aunt's puffy red face. I gave you my maiden's gift. I will give you a son too. But I married him with moon tea, with tansy and mint and wormwood, a spoon of honey and a drop of penny royal. It wasn't me. I never knew. I only drank what father gave me. That's past and done, Lysa. Lord Huster's dead, and his old maester as well. Littlefinger moved closer. Have you been at the wine again? You ought not to talk so much. We don't want Elaine to know more than she should, do we? Or Marillion. Lady Lysa ignored that. Cat never gave you anything. It was me who got you your first post. Who made John bring you to court so we could be close to one another. You promised me you would never forget that. Nor have I. We're together. Just as you always wanted. Just as we always planned. Just let go of Sansa's hair. I won't. I saw you kissing in the snow. She's just like her mother. Catelyn kissed you in the God's Wood. But she never meant it. She never wanted you. Why did you love her best? It was me. It was always me. I know, love. He took another step. 
and I am here. All you need to do is take my hand. Come on. He held it out to her. There's no cause for these tears. Tears, tears, tears. She sobbed hysterically. No need for tears. But that's not what you said in King's Landing. You told me to put the tears in John's wine, and I did. For Robert and for us. And I wrote Catelyn and told her the Lannisters had killed my lord husband, just as you said. That was so clever. You were always clever. I told father that. I said, Patar's so clever. He'll rise high. He will. He will. And he's sweet and gentle. And I have his little baby in my belly. Why did you kiss her? Why? We're together now. We're together after so long, so very long. Why would you want to kiss her? Lysa, Patar sighed, after all the storms we've suffered, you should trust me better. I swear I shall never leave your side again for as long as we both shall live. Truly? She asked, weeping. Oh, truly? Truly. Now unhand the girl and come give me a kiss. Lysa threw herself into Littlefinger's arms, sobbing. As they hugged, Sansa crawled from the moon door on hands and knees and wrapped her arms around the nearest pillar. She could feel her heart pounding. There was snow in her hair, and her right shoe was missing. It must have fallen. She shuddered and hugged the pillar tighter. Littlefinger let Lysa sob against his chest for a moment, then put his hands on her arms and kissed her lightly. My sweet, silly... Jealous wife, he said, chuckling. I've only loved one woman, I promise you. Lysa Aaron smiled tremulously. Only one? Oh, Papa, do you swear it? Only one? Only cat. He gave her a short, sharp shove. Lysa stumbled backward, her feet slipping on the wet marble, and then she was gone. She never screamed. For the longest time, there was no sound but the wind. Marillion gasped, You, you... The guards were shouting outside the door, pounding with the butts of their heavy spears. Lord Patar pulled Sansa to her feet. You're not hurt. When she shook her head, he said, Run, let my guards in then. Quick now. There's no time to lose. This singer's killed my lady wife. 